Uh, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how the Myler combination bit works. Um, it's one of our most interesting tools, but it can be a little intimidating when you first look at it, as it comes completely set up like this. So there's a nose band and a chin strap uh, attached to the, the purchase of the bit. And the role of the nose band and the chin strap is to apply pressure. So if you wouldn't mind coming in, helping me a little bit. No, you can just hold it, pull it a little tense. We call this a chin strap instead of a curb strap because a curb strap would sit loose and you'd want maybe uh, the two fingers or however you measure your curb strap. On a Mylar combination bit, the beauty of the combination bit requires that there be tension from the nose band to the chin strap in order for the bit to work properly. So when you put this chin strap on, it actually needs to be buckled flat against your horse's jaw and it will actually sit a little higher if you like that'll be more like where the nose is it'll sit a little higher on the horse's head than the nose band does so you want the tension here because if you watch when i pull back on the rein um, watch this action here and you can see how the chin and the nose work together along with the pole pressure from the head stall to create three different pressure points we call these halter pressure points because you've been using these pressure points on your horse since he was a baby and he had his first halter put on. If your horse responds to this pressure, these three pressure points of the nose, chin, and pole, and he comes back to your hand, it will relax. But if he ignores that pressure and he keeps, gets a little hot into the bit, um, this mouthpiece will start to move. It's got a little bit of a slide. If the mouthpiece starts to move and he understands what's happening and he comes back to you, everything will relax. But if he ignores that second warning, the mouthpiece will only slide about an inch, and then it hits a stop. When it hits the stop, then the mouthpiece actually engages and does whatever the mouthpiece is designed to do. In this case, it's a level two mouthpiece, so it's gonna break and rotate down onto the tongue and apply a little bit of tongue pressure. But essentially, your horse has had three opportunities to return to your hands before he reaches the mouthpiece engaging. So he's given ample warning and you can ride really aggressively into this bit because you're riding off of the nose, chin, and pole pressure and not in interfering with his ability to move his tongue around. So it keeps the horse really soft and light. The rein positions, there are two rein positions on this bit. We don't ever re recommend using the big ring because that just becomes direct rein action and you lose the action that you need for the nose, chin, and pole. So choose your rein position based on your hands. Um, this is not a leveraged cheek. It looks like a leveraged cheek because it's really long. Um, when you compare it to something like this, oops. when you compare it to a flat shank, this is a leveraged cheek. Um, but the difference is to have leverage, you have to have, don't mind holding that, you have to have more shank below the mouthpiece than you have purchase above the mouthpiece. So on a seven inch shank, this has about a five inch to two inch ratio. So you're getting about two to two and a half um, to one ratio of rein pressure on the horse's mouth. So every time you pull back on the rein, you get about two and a half times the force on the horse's mouth. That's what leverage does. In the combination bit, this is where your mouthpiece sits. So here's your shank and here's your purchase. So there's less shank below the mouthpiece than there is purchase above the mouthpiece. So what that means is you can't actually increase the force on your horse's mouth because there isn't enough shank down here. So don't worry too much about riding more severely or strongly when you pick your rein position. Do it based on how quick your hands are or how soft your hands are. If you have a very soft, light, or tentative rein action, then you're probably gonna wanna ride down here because it'll translate your rein action more efficiently. If you tend to be really quick or heavy um, on your horse, then you're probably gonna wanna ride here because it will, it will keep your horse from being over -reined. But you can experiment and figure out which one works best for you. You can also use different rein positions depending on what you're doing with your horse and what time you're riding your horse. Or if you're riding multiple horses, you can certainly change your rein position to get a better reaction out and response time out of your horse. So don't be afraid to try different rein positions.